today, uh, it's about Genesis Radiation Metrology Development at GovMet. There will be there will be four talks, uh, as described here. I will not go into details because it's uh, the role of uh, Ream Hamdi, which will be chair of the of the webinar of today. And Ream is the CSRA Communication Working Group member. So please, Ream, the floor is yours. Our first speaker today is Omar uh, Kanakarie. Uh, Engineer Omar is the head of Metrology Division, GCC Standardization Organization. He received a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineer in 1984. He worked in Jordan, in Jordan for about 13 years as a standards engineer, then moved to a to private sector and worked with a consultancy firm as a QMS consultant. Uh, he is an IRCA uh, registered quality management system lead auditor and certified technical auditor. Currently, he deals with the standardization and metrology issues in GCC standardization organization Saudi Arabia and involves involvement activities as a regional metrology organization. So, uh, welcome, Omar, and head over to you, please start. Riham, thank you very much for this excellent uh, introduction. And uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, all of you for. Uh, arranging this webinar. It's a, uh, it's a good initiative uh, to inform you about the new RMO, uh, Gulf Met. So thank you very much for all uh, for these uh, arrangements. I would like uh, to start that uh, Gulf Met uh, is a stands for the Gulf Associations for Metrology. Uh, as Reham said, uh, she, uh, uh, it's a regional metrology organization, RMO, uh, established under the auspices of uh, the GCC standardization organizations. I would like to uh, highlight that most of the metrology activities within the uh, Middle East countries, it's, you know, uh, under the umbrella, always under the umbrella of the uh, standardizations activities is coming. And uh, most of the uh, national uh, metrology institutes, it's uh, reporting. Mostly they are reporting to uh, the uh, organization called uh, uh, Standards and Metrology Organizations uh, within the, uh, even in the GCC or in the Middle East. And uh, I, uh, I feel that it's uh, sometimes uh, uh, it's uh, a pity for that because uh, uh, I understand that uh, the standardization people sometimes uh, they don't uh, really pay attention uh, uh, to what metrology is and sometimes they are not taking it uh, seriously so they are paying more attention to standard activities rather than metrology activities. Uh, the member of uh, GulfMet are the National Metrology Institute uh, of United Arab Emirates, and in this case, EMI, uh, Emirate Metrology Institutes, is the member of the Gulf Mets. In Kingdom of Bahrain, uh, it's under the Ministry of Industries and Tourism. Uh, it's a small directorate uh, dealing with the standards and meteorology, and uh, that's the problem that's uh, uh, in Kingdom of Bahrain. The metrology is, is starting and it's an emerging. Probably uh, very soon we will see another NMIs uh, uh, growing in the uh, Kingdom of Bahrain. Uh, uh, in Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, there is NMCC, which is well known and it's uh, well established institutes, but still belong to SASO, the uh, Standards and Metrology Organization in Saudi Arabia. Uh, recently in uh, Oman, they have a National Metrology Institute. It's started. Uh, they need a lot of uh, attention. Uh, I think that uh, very soon they will be uh, one of the uh, National Metrology Institutes uh, emerging in the uh, Oman. Qatar's, uh, they have decided to have a National Metrology Institute, but still uh, 
there is no uh, progress in this uh, uh, stage of cutters. Uh, Kuwait also, they are trying. Uh, then, you know, we have also a Republic of Yemen. Uh, as you know, that the war stopped everything with Yemen right now. And hope we hope that it will come back and uh, they will be uh, very active in our uh, 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 RMO Gulf Mate. Uh, Gulf Mate has been established uh, under the umbrella of the GCC uh, organization. It means that there is a decision. The decision has been taken by the ministers of industry who are the board of the directors of the GCC standardization organizations. It was in 2010. Uh, based on that, uh, we have uh, started our activity by uh, assigning the chair of the Gulf Mates and uh, preparing the structures of the Gulf Mates. Uh, the aim of that that to uh, enhance the meteorological infrastructures and activities within the member states and to ensure that technical capability of national meteorology institutes and designated institute participated in the RMO are uh, recognized, their capabilities are recognized internationally. Uh, actually, is, uh, if you see that uh, uh, we have six uh, member, and I think that RMO with six member, uh, it means that uh, we are in a, a weak position. So we open the uh, area or the memberships to other countries, well-established countries, we call it, uh, to be as an associate member. So we have invited uh, uh, the NMI of Turkey, OMI, and also NES. Uh, the National Metrology Standards of NIS or, or of Egypt, also Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, South Korea, Chris, and also uh, Hong Kong uh, SCL, the National Metrology Institutes in the SCL. Uh, these are uh, in the map the uh, our members and associate member. But I would like to highlight from this slide that Iraq recently has been accepted uh, as an associate members of the Gulf Net, the general organizations for standardization and quality in Iraq uh, has become uh, as a, a Gulf Net associate members. And actually, I would like to invite all uh, uh, countries who are close to GCC countries like Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and others within, you know, the Middle East, they can join the uh, Gulf Mate as a street members. Uh, to tell you the truth that uh, there is no uh, difference in rights of uh, members and associate members in terms of technical uh, uh, activities. Uh, in the uh, technical uh, committees, they have the right to vote. Uh, they have the right to uh, uh, involve in any activities like laboratory comparisons, uh, trainings, other activities within the TC. So they have a four rights, except they cannot nominate themselves as the TC chairs. That's the only, or uh, as a Gulf Med president of the. Uh, uh, are aiming to uh, be as an associated members. Uh, the issue of Gulf Met is started uh, once the GCC standardization organization GSO has been uh, established in May 24, uh, 2004. And uh, uh, His Excellency Rashid Dimpad has a vision <coughs> that we have to uh, enhance the capabilities uh, in metrology as well as in standardizations. So his visions uh, uh, has been realized by uh, inviting an expert uh, to have a GSO workshop in metrology. Uh, Dr. Uh, Alperhan Zeiler, uh, he was uh, uh, known as an expert in metrology and his work with the third uh, countries 
in metrology to develop. And he has a, a lot of, uh, you know, book, book uh, uh, issued in how to improve metrology capabilities. So we invite him to the workshop. And based on that, uh, we had like a roadmap how we can improve the situation. One of them concentrate in legislation. So we, we have worked in legislations and we have issued uh, as a GCC common metrology law that was in May uh, 2007. Uh, when we complete, you know, and uh, uh, issued the common metrology law and start, you know, legislation to be realized in the GCC countries, we invited uh, Dr. Andrew Wallert, as well as uh, the, he used to be as a director of PIPM, uh, as well as uh, Dr. Uh, Francis Magana, the OIML director also, with Dr. Pedro Spina, he is the JCRB uh, uh, executive secretary in that times, to a workshop. And based on this, this workshop, we had a recommendation to establish a uh, Gulf Net. It was in June 2010, 2010. We have uh, submitted our application to be recognized uh, as an RMO to the GCRB in uh, uh, February 2020, uh, 2011. Uh, and it took us, you know, almost three years to be recognized in provisional uh, basis or what they call provisional recognitions as an RMO. That means that we have a voice without vote in that time. So uh, uh, we uh, were happy to uh, be recognized uh, in the provisional basis. And uh, there is, you know, uh, condition that we have to realize or to achieve uh, in order to be a full member of the uh, JCRB. Uh, uh, JCRB. Uh, actually, in uh, uh, March 2021, the JCRB recommendations uh, to admit GulfMed as a full member. And this recommendation has been raised to the CIPM uh, and a decision in CIPM on admitting the Gulf Met as a full member was talk, uh, was taken. Uh, it means that with voice and also right to vote. So uh, June 2021, uh, we've been ha we uh, Gulf Met has been recognized as a full member of the GCRB. This is the decisions, and actually we would like in this uh, occasion to thank all the other most like Afromits, APMP, Euromit, Comet, SIM, for their uh, 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 for their supports, because really uh, still they are supporting us uh, as they are seeing us as a young RMO. So we are receiving a lot of encouragement and support from other, uh, you know, well-established RMO. Uh, as uh, all the organizations, so we, sit, we have to set our visions, and actually our vision is to establish a self-sufficient uh, and sustainable RMO. And our mission is to develop sustainers through the exchange of knowledge and cooperations uh, to meet the requirements for the international uh, recognitions also uh, to maintain Gulf Met performance by availabilities of necessary resources and to enhance technical capabilities of our NMI in the member states. This has come to uh, how we can realize our visions and missions. Uh, we set a, a bunch of uh, goals and one of our goals is to facilitate the recognition of CMC, uh, CMCs of our member state. We also keen to develop a partnership with other RMOs and international organizations. Uh, we are also supporting member states to fulfill the CIPMRA requirements. 
We also effectively support uh, the stakeholders through cooperations and coordinations. We support the research and the studies in the field of metrologies. In terms of capacity, uh, capacity uh, buildings, uh, we are providing proper trainings uh, for the member states. And we are focusing because so we know that the TC is the backbone of any art. Uh, we are focusing in strengthening the, of the TC and their capabilities. So these are the goals. Uh, if you look, we have nine uh, uh, TCs. Actually, is the, the last uh, Gulf Mechia. They are proposing uh, two other technical committee in uh, uh, acoustics and also in time and frequency. Uh, we are reporting uh, to the steering committees, which is uh, reporting to the uh, GSO technical councils, and uh, the technical council is reporting to the GSO ministerial committee. Uh, probably uh, some of you will ask the question uh, how we uh, finance our activities. Actually, the budget of uh, the Gulf Met is part of the GSO budget. So uh, we are, uh, uh, you know, uh, financing our activities within the GSO uh, budgets. And uh, every year we have to set uh, 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 what we need uh, in terms of activities and what money we need in terms of uh, executing these activities. These are uh, the president, uh, Ms. Uh, Amina, or engineer Amina al -Bastaki. She is the president. The vice president is uh, Dr. Ismail al -Fale. Amina, she is from the United Arab Emirates. Uh, Dr. Ismail al -Fale, he is from Saudi Arabia. Uh, me and my colleagues, uh, uh, we are uh, working in the Gulf Mid Secretariat, so we are supporting all the activities of uh, the Gulf Mets. Just to give you uh, uh, roughly uh, what we have accomplished in these 10 years, uh, starting from the uh, establishment of the Gulf Mets, uh, the number of the CMCs that has been uh, registered in the KCDB is uh, 69. We have uh, also, uh, as a key comparison, we organized uh, seven key comparisons, a supplementary comparison, 25. So uh, these are our activity. Beside that, we have a lot of activity which support, you know, our member states and the NMIs in the member states. Uh, I would like to conclude my presentation because I know that I have 10 minutes to, and I have to stick with the times. Uh, I uh, would like to invite you uh, to share us with your experience the second metrology symposium, which uh, will be organized next year uh, in Dubai in February uh, 27 to 28 uh, in 2024. So we welcome you to share us uh, your experience. And by that, I would like to conclude my presentations. Uh, I hope that. Uh, you got uh, uh, enough information about the Gulf Mets and the activities of the Gulf Mets. Thank you very much. Our next speaker today is uh, Samia Mohammed. Uh, Samia is holding a master's degree in risk and safety management from Liverpool John Wolf University in UK with background in biochemistry field. She is working in Federal Authority for Nuclear Regulation at United Arab Emirates for 20 years. She is currently holding the position of SSDL specialist and the quality management system in her lab. Since 2021, she has been appointed as the TC chair for IR in Gulf Med region. So welcome, Samia. I'm curious to hear your presentation. And so hand over to you. Please Hello everyone, my name is Mohammed. As Ms. Riham, she said that I'm the TC chair of the TCIR and within the government. And today my presentation, it will be about 
the, um, the committee activities and the capabilities as well. So within my presentation, it will be introduction about the technical committee that I'm chairing, who are the members, associate members. Also, we have observers, the metrological structure for each member of the Gulf Med TCIR, their technical capabilities, the activities has been done within this committee, and what is the progress of our claiming CMCs. So regarding the introduction, as uh, engineer Omar, he stated that we are uh, newly has been established uh, from February 2021. And our roles, responsibilities is similar to any other uh, RMOs TC chairs is providing the forum for the all the NMIs and the DI experts to join within one platform and providing you know, um, knowledge sharing, technical experts, and uh, discussing the issues related to the ionizing radiation. Our joint associate members are uh, from Turkey, South Korea, Bosnia and Herzeg, and Egypt. And they are fulfilling their requirements or their rules uh, through our uh, meetings, having a fruitful discussion regarding the technical uh, capabilities that we have. So also we are conducting or providing intercomparison as technical evidence for our competencies and supporting the members and establishing their calibration measurement capabilities. Um, last but not least, also we are providing technical review for the inter-RMO as well as the intra-RMO for the, uh, claiming the CMCs. So currently, the members of the TCIR is uh, from the six countries within the Gulf uh, region, which is from the United Arab Emirates. It is our uh, my laboratory or the organization I'm working with is FANAR SSTL. We have from Saudi Arabia three members uh, from three different laboratories. So we have a SASO from the National Meteorology Institute in Saudi Arabia. We have KA Cast. It, it is an SSTL found in Riyadh. Another SSTL, which is the King Faisal Hospital, for the um, SSTL calibration service as well. We have the Kuwait Ministry of Health. They have also an SSTL for the radiation protection purposes. Um, we are waiting for the Kingdom of Bahrain to nominate uh, from their side, so they can take the advantage and the activities within our. Um, the committee. From Qatar, we have the Ministry of Municipality and Environment. They are still in the designing phase to establish their SSTL. So it will be really a good opportunity for them to learn from our experience and to build their own SSTL. From Oman, we have two members, Ministry of Health, also as well as from the Ministry of Commerce and Industry and Investment Promotion. They don't have an SSTL, but their dosimetry service providers, as well as for radiation protection, uh, they are taking the, the benefit from the, our activities. So the associate members are Bosnia and Herzeg. Uh, they have their NMIs. We have the Egypt, the Metrology Lab, also NES. We have the South uh, Korea, which is CRIS, their National Metrology Institute as well as the Turkey at Tinmak as designated institute for the, um, the ionizing radiation. The observers that we have it, they have joined recently after our collaboration with the IEA um, Aratia region that they are allowed to participate in our committee only as an observers. So they are guests in our meetings. They don't have a right to vote, but they are welcome to participate in our trainings and comparison as well. But unfortunately, even if the, the report of comparisons has been published, they cannot claim their CMCs if they are not being um, nominated as designated institute. So the, the observers are we have from Jordan, we have from Uzbekistan, Iraq, Lebanon, Syria, as well as Yemen. The meteorological structure for each member, I will start it with United Arab Emirates. As you can see here that Moyad, the Ministry of Industry and Advanced Technology, it is the delegated authority within the United Arab Emirates, uh, which is the focal point for the Gulf Med. And they have nominated uh, FANAR as the designated institute for the ionizing radiation. 
Mayat, they have a department called Metrology Department, which they are responsible for the Legal Metrology Division. They do verification and working under the direct supervision of Mayat uh, to do the verification for the legal control. Um, the other, uh, we have accreditation bodies, which is two within the United Arab Emirates. It is ENAS as well as EAC, and they are in co collaboration with the, um, the Ministry of uh, Industry and Advanced Technology. FANAR SSDL, as designated institute, it is traceable to the IEA, and IEA also traceable to the BIPM. Our National Metrology Institute, it is called EMI, which is short called for Emirates Metrology Institute. So they have all the kind of metrologies in other fields and not in ionizing radiation. FENAR SSDL, they are responsible as the designated institute in the ionizing radiation. The metrological structure for Saudi Arabia, I will start with the KA CAST SSDL. Um, they are traceable to the IEA and their delegated authority within the Saudi Arabia is, is called Taqyis. Uh, they are holding the legal metrology authority, which provide verifications for the measuring instruments subjected to legal control. The other SSDL, it is found in the King Faisal Hospital and the Research Center, and it's been established probably in 1983. The National Metrology Institute, it is SASO uh, for the other metrology fields other than ionizing radiation. These, the uh, King Faisal Hospital, SSDL, they are tra traceable not only to the IEA, but to the multiple primary laboratories such as NPL, NEST, PTB, and NRC as well. The accreditation body within the Saudi Arabia is the Saudi accreditation, which is in collaboration with Taqyis, and they are recognized by ILIC as well. In Kuwait, the meteorological structure is that the SSDL, it is under the Ministry of Health, which is their delegated authority under the Gulf Med is, is called that the public Authority for Industry, uh, in collaboration with the GCC Accreditation Center that is being recognized by ILAC for the accreditation uh, of the calibration laboratories or testing laboratories. And the Public Authority for Industry, they also recognized as the National Metrology Institute. But uh, Kuwait so far, also as well as the Saudi, Saudi Arabia SSDLs are not yet designated institute, but they are under the progress um, for to be officially being identified as DI. So the technical capabilities for all these members, as you can see, we have a common area and the radiation protection field, whether in gamma or X-ray based on the ISO 4037 and it is fully developed and it is available for the uh, services for the customers. We have also the diagnostic radiology in RQR and RQA available for the, uh, for the customers, except for the Kuwait SSDL still under progress. Hopefully by the end of the year, it will be fully developed. The neutron measurements, um, it is being started with the King Faisal Hospital in Saudi Arabia but the other members are still in progress. The other areas, you can see that the King Faisal Hospital SSTL is more fully developed or more expanded than the other laboratories, uh, specifically in the, um, the diagnostic radiology of the RQT and the mammography, as well as the absorbed dose to water and radiotherapy or the the brachytherapy. They have also calibrations and for the skin cancer or they call it contact therapy based on the CCRI qualities. And all the laboratories, they are fully developed as reference radiation in terms of the air karma, ambient dose or the personal dose equivalent such as HP10, HP0.07 or the HP3 for the islands. In the United Arab Emirates, FANAR SSTL, we are um, designed the facility as one irradiation room 
the the size of of the room is quite big, nine times eight times eight, and it equip it with the four different irradiators. So we have the neutron irradiator, which is recently has been um, uh, installed in the uh, early of 2022. We have the gamma beam irradiator, X-ray irradiator, as well as panoramic radiator. The panoramic radiator, irradiator, as you are aware, recently they published the ISO 4037. They have excluded the panoramic, so it is not within the, our ISO accreditation services, but we use it for the research purposes. In Saudi Arabia, the King Faisal Hospital, they have multiple rooms. Each one of them is separate with uh, uh, each irradiator. For example, we have a room with a gamma irradiator uh, with six sources of cesium and one cobalt sources. Uh, we have the second room is with the therapy unit um, with the cobalt source, and they have three different reference chambers and electrometers for this purpose. They have a contamination meter as well, neutron irradiator, BRCA therapy unit, as well as two uh, X-ray tubes within one X-ray system, which is they use it for radiation protection, diagnostic radiology, as well as for the therapy level. And the Saudi Arabia, the other SSDL, which is belong to the KA cast uh, SSDL. So they have two um, uh, radiation rooms. One of them is occupied by in parallel with the gamma irradiator as well as X-ray. And they have a shared control room for this one. The other irradiation room is the neutron irradiator and it's look like collimated. It is under progress to be established and to be to join the planned intercomparison in future. For the Kuwait SSDL, which is under the Ministry of Health, they have multiple rooms as well. So one of them is occupied with a gamma irradiator uh, uh, with a model OB6, and it is used for radiation protection purposes. Within the picture, they have just demonstrated with the slab phantom for the personal dosimeter irradiation. The other room is occupied with the X-ray radiator for the narrow beams for the purpose of radiation protection. And the third one, it is only an example of how they use the gamma irradiator just to expose the um, ion chamber free in air for the air karma rate. So within the activities of the, um, the Technical Committee Ionizing Radiation, since we have established in 2021, we have started to check the gaps of the knowledge between the members, and we have identified that they are looking for the quality management system based on ISO 17025. So an online training has been uh, conducted with the 53 participants, and the uh, uh, the the recorded uh, training it's been uploaded on the BIPM e-learning platform and it is available for uh, everyone who is looking for uh, or interested uh, to take this uh, course. We had another training courses developed for the members which is based on the ISO 4037 for the radiation protection reference fields and the calibration dosimeters. 43 participants has joined this course, and the course is also available on the BIPM e-learning website. Based on these uh, trainings feedbacks, we had a positive feedback from the uh, participants, not only from the GulfMed, also from the associate members, and they were looking more for uh, more trainings, basically become physically face-to-face -face or workshops, even they are requesting more time to be added within these trainings. Due to the online courses, we have made it short, and uh, the JIT, the, um, the, uh, we call it the, uh, the, the, the law communications or uh, the, uh, the internet loss during the internet. This is caused the fatigue uh, between the uh, participants and the law con uh, connectivity as well. So face-to-face, -face, they have recommended more than the online training courses. 
So one of the activities also, it has been conducted last year in 2022. It is the peer review qualification scheme. It has been organized by the Gulf Mets. It's not only for the TCIR, it was for the older members. So it was an intensive courses. It started in June 2022 uh, regarding the quality management system, how to do a peer review skills, techniques, management, uh, risk uh, assessment, and how to observe the uh, audit uh, or as a technical assessor within the uh, peer review or uh, audit with the other uh, RMOs. It ended in January 2023 with comprehensive written exam and the successful participants they will be able to join a next step as an observers with a, a real practice for the peer review uh, with the others within the RMO or the uh, other RMOs if uh, they are looking for um, to approve the quality management system of one of the laboratories so um, this year, we have conducted training courses in metrology uh, of the calibration of neutron as well as contamination meters, as this is one of the future plans to expand the uh, services within the Gulf Med region. Uh, this is was demanded by the uh, members and it is being delivered uh, by the academic institutes and universities in Taiwan as um, uh, support from their side. Um, regarding the intercomparisons, I will not go into deep because this is uh, will be presented uh, in details by Dr. Mehana after me. But um, let's say in a summary, we have now running two ongoing uh, intercomparisons regarding radiation protection purpose. Uh, one of them, it will be in the gamma field for the cesium-137. Eight laboratories is participating. Our pilot lab is King Faisal Hospital with Dr. Mehanna. The link lab that we have chosen, it's PTB, and it's still uh, in the measurement phase. The other one is supplementary comparison for the X-ray, Air Kerma, based on ISO 4037 for the N-series qualities. It is the same participants with the key comparison I have uh, already mentioned for the cesium, and it is going in parallel uh, with the same artifact that has been used in the key comparison. We have a delay in the artifact shipment uh, due to you know the routine challenge that we are facing uh, for the custom clearance and the shipment companies. The third ongoing uh, intercomparison is also supplementary for the diagnostic uh, radiology in air kerma, RQR and RQA, as well as RQT, beam qualities, the same participants, but it has just recently been uh, registered in the KCDB. And the first participant, so the Arabia SSDLs, they have uh, finalized or completed their measurements. It will go to the next participants. Uh, after it's being finalized by the pilot lab um, stability check. So it is planned to be done in 2022, but we have postponed it to this year because we have seen some of the participants are not yet ready, such as uh, the Kuwait SSTL. So once we have completed the training program with them, we have checked their establishment has been completed. So we started uh, this year. For the designated institutes so far in United Arab Emirates, FANAR SSDL is the only designated institute in ionizing radiation. Two labs from Saudi Arabia, they are requesting to be nominated, uh, but one of them will be for the radiation protection and the other one for the uh, medical um, purposes. Uh, so they recently they have the ISO certificate 9001, but they are looking forward to be granted with the ISO 17025 that concerns the quality management system for the laboratories. The members and observers um, are also are members of the IEA WHO network. So that's why we have a collaboration with the observers to attend our trainings and the comparisons as well. For the CMCs, so far, there is no CMCs has been established until now within the Gulf Med region, but hopefully the United Arab Emirates SSTL will achieve successfully 
because we have our technical comparison report uh, as a bilateral uh, intercomparison with the IEA uh, to support our CMCs. We have recently um, pub, you know, presented our quality management system to the Gulf Med TCQS uh, that has been approved. And we have also our accreditation scope has been granted based on the CIPM MRA uh, requirements, the guidelines with the technical assessors, and it's been given by the, um, the uh, uh, one of the accreditation bodies within the United Arab Emirates uh, in us. The roadmap that we have it so far, so in 2022, we have accomplished to have one designated institute that officially been uh, nominated, and it is found in BIPM uh, website. Uh, we have an agreement with the IEA to support the Gulf Med uh, Action Plan. And 2023, we are, have conducted our uh, peer review uh, or the accreditation body uh, with the, uh, for the SSDL members to be, uh, have a qualified uh, quality management system in their laboratories. We are looking forward to submit our CMCs after accomplishing the, the technical uh, evidence such as the intercomparison that it is on ongoing uh, phase. Um, in 2024, you can see that we are going, once we finalize our establishment in neutron measurements, we will propose a supplementary comparison neutron and the ambient dose equivalent rate. And we will extend our quality management system to include the neutron measurements and establish surface contamination meter based on the the customer's demand within the region. And 25 and 26 will go forward for the radiotherapy field and propose or participate in intercomparison in this field as well as the surface contamination. So this is my presentation. Hopefully it was clear. And if you have any questions, Reham, she might keep it uh, till the end. The yes, floor you. is yours. Yes. Mahana Ari. Uh, he is the head of the secondary standard dosimetry laboratory at King Faisal Hospital, uh, Saudi Arabia. He is a member of CCIR, currently acting as a pilot lab for case and supplementary comparisons in radiation protection and the diagnostic radiology calibration. He spent over three decades of experience in designing and managing SSDLs. He has extensive experience in establishing, implementing, and maintaining ISO 17025 uh, uh, quality management system for the metric and calibration laboratories. He is IAEA and WHO expert and consultant since uh, 9000, more than 20 uh, expert missions for designing and setting up SSDLs. Uh, group training in dosimetry, calibration, and uh, radiation protection. He is a member of the scientific committee of uh, the IAEA WHO uh, SSDL network since January 2020. So, welcome, Hannah, and uh, uh, please start your presentation. Dear colleagues, uh, I will try to, uh, to, to be as uh, short as possible, even if the presentation is a little bit. Uh, uh, long. Uh, I will uh, focus my presentation on the uh, presentation of of the um, the three uh, comparisons, uh, the key and uh, supplementary comparisons that we are we have we are proud to to uh, pilot uh, currently. So uh, I will I will just present the uh, the uh, a summary of the of the uh, participants the. Uh, the planet and this uh, actual schedule and we'll give some information about what happened during the the first uh, i mean two comparisons that we are trying to use for the uh, the upcoming diagnostic radiology comparison so i will uh, uh, just these are the uh, for the first time actually in government and in the region for the ionizing radiation uh, area we are running these uh, three comparisons. It, it's really, uh, I mean, a challenge and the courage from us to start right away with the three comparisons. 
people who are running the comparison, they know how complicated it is, especially when you start the first time and you have many unforeseen uh, problems that are appearing during the uh, during the exercises. So the the two um, the three uh, comparisons are actually registered in in the uh, BIPN uh, KCDB since the beginning. It was the fir the first two uh, comparisons, the key comparisons for for radiation protection calibration uh, in cesium, and the uh, supplementary comparisons for the narrow beam spectra were registered in May 2022, and the uh, the, the diagnostic radiology was registered this year. So this is the, uh, for, uh, I will start with the, the, uh, the key comparison and the key supplementary comparison for radiation protection. This is the artifact that we are, we are using. This is a transfer chamber, PTW 32002, which is one liter chamber, very nice chamber, very producible and st also strong ch chamber. Uh, we are, sending the, it in, in, in this box and we I included also two two um, uh, cable adapters in case because this chamber has uh, a TNC uh, T, uh, it has um, a TNC connector so for people who, are, who have electrometer with BNC or type M uh, connectors you can use these two uh, these two uh, adapters. Uh, we have actually nine participants uh, if in this comparison and we have uh, some participants from from outside the region Bosnia uh, we have also um, uh, Uzbekistan who, who I mean uh, asked us to participate and uh, also we have the linking lab the PTB, uh, I would like to take the opportunity to thank uh, PTB for having accepted to, to act as a linking lab. This is very important for us to just to uh, compare the, res the results of the, uh, the comparison first. And secondly, uh, uh, our lab, we, we would like to participate to the comparison and use our results for, for uh, uh, as an evidence for publishing our CMTs in the future. Okay, so and we have in, in Turkey, uh, uh, Miss Shildim, uh, she she passed away last year, I think so. She was replaced by by Irink. Uh, Irink was actually uh, our our counterpart for for Turkey from Telmak uh, Ankara SDM. Regarding the uh, the schedule, we came a. Uh, uh, came up with the schedule at the beginning in 2022, uh, which is, it was nice uh, schedule uh, uh, where everyone agreed about the uh, uh, their uh, availability. Unfortunately, there was many many uh, problems that appeared during the course of the comparison. The most important problem appeared when we sent our chamber to. Uh, to PTB, it was in October. It was calibrated actually by the end of October, so it took time to to, to be calibrated. And then uh, I will explain uh, in the next slide. But uh, I would like to give some some uh, some details here. The uh, PTB were, was supposed to send directly the chamber to the uh, uh, Turkey, but they said that they cannot because they have a procedure to send back. The chamber to the initial, I mean the, uh, the initial country, because they are uh, they were using the uh, temporary access, temporary uh, import uh, procedure, so they had to re-export it to the same country. So they sent us the chamber. Unfortunately, it was stuck with the uh, with the uh, the customs, as I will uh, I will be explaining. And then it went back to PTB, and PTB they uh, they were so kind to. Uh, to accept to send it directly to the uh, and uh, overpass the procedure and send it to uh, Turkey. Turkey received the chamber in uh, in April. Unfortunately, they had the same problem as in Saudi Arabia for the customs clearance, and it was stuck there for from April to uh, June. 
uh, for almost uh, three months. It was calibrated actually, and then they were asked to send it to the next participants, to the uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. And uh, right now, the chamber was transferred to the local carrier, and they are still waiting for the uh, for the clearance from the customs for the uh, exporting the chamber. Uh, right now, we do, we don't have any any uh, information about the uh, update of this uh, this uh, chamber. So it will uh, uh, actually we have we have uh, a delay of about six months. It's a pity, but we couldn't avoid this kind of. Uh, of uh, problems. So these are the uh, chronology of events and lesson learned. Uh, so actually what happens in Saudi Arabia is that we have a kind of local carrier SAMSA, uh, so uh, who car contracted with our hospital. So we cannot send the chambers uh, through DHL. We, uh, we uh, hand, uh, of, handed over the chamber to the SAMSA, but SAMSA they don't have a representative in Europe, so they sent it through DHL. And then we have a special procedure here in Saudi Arabia. When you export something, uh, you have to establish the custom. They establish a document that is uh, some kind of a temporary export document, which is called Bayan. Uh, so the uh, DHL established the Bayan, but they lost the, the document. And then that's why we were not able to, uh, to uh, get the chamber we are waiting for a long time and then once we decided to uh, pay uh, even i mean uh, pay the uh, the uh, the clearance as uh, if the chamber was a new a new chamber the uh, the chamber was sent back to uh, by the custom to uh, ptb okay so the lesson learned is that uh, First of all, we asked the government to provide us with uh, an official designation of, of our SSDL as a pilot lab. It, it may help uh, with the customs if we have such a document. And then we, uh, right now, we decided to always request the Bayan when the chamber leaves the uh, Saudi Arabia so, uh, uh, so that we can keep the document with us and uh, distribute it to the participants and ask them to. Uh, send it back with a document. Whenever SAMSA is not available uh, in, in the pa participants' country, please, uh, we ask them to send it back through the DHL because they know DHL, they have very nice procedures and they know us because previously we were contracting, we contracted with them so they know us and keep uh, the document uh, all the time with the, with the artifact whenever you send back the chamber to our lab. This is the uh, instruction that we are sending to the participants. Regarding the uh, intercomparison itself, so we uh, worked, we uh, drafted a very nice uh, technical protocol that was distributed to the participants for for their review. And then we, uh, these are the two uh, protocols. We initially, we started with one protocol, like a comparison protocol, and then uh, BIPM, I mean, the, the advice us to split this in two different uh, uh, protocol, I mean, comparisons. One key comparison, because we are, we have already the, uh, the key, uh, key comparison in the database, so, uh, and one supplementary for, for, for the radiation protection narrow beam spectra. These are the beam qualities that were selected among the, uh, the, all the energies. So we have the cesium and you have the N14, AT and 100, and 200 and 300. We actually use the same protocol, the same uh, beam qualities uh, that were used by the IEA uh, comparison protocol. So just to keep in the same loop, the same uh, procedure. Uh, coming to the uh, to the uh, to the pilot lab, uh, we would like to give some some results or some information about the uh, the uh, our lab. This is the uh, which was well well explained by uh, by uh, Samia, by the way. So this uh, we have uh, two irradiators actually. Uh, we we use the uh, the old irradiator as we were familiar with uh, with that, and we had performed many measurements with that. So we have uh, different uh, cesium sources. Uh, the first one was in, was upgraded in two thousand fourteen, and we purchased a new. 
uh, irradiator with four, three, five Curie uh, cesium source. So the, uh, for the X-ray, we have also an old X-ray source that was uh, upgraded in, uh, in December 2021. Now we have a very nice, very uh, uh, good X-ray, which uh, includes the, uh, the uh, collimators, the, the monitor chamber, and we have also here the, uh, this part here. This is for the, uh, this one, this is for the uh, inherent filtration when we use the narrow beam uh, spectra. Yes, and then the, in, when it comes to the radiation geometry, it is uh, actually included in the uh, calibration, uh, uh, calibration uh, appendix that we, uh, we issue when we calibrate ionization chambers. So we, we use three meters actually as the reference uh, distance. Uh, currently, we are switching to two, two meters and, uh, and have to be compliant with the ISO 4037 and when it comes to the, uh, the conversion uh, uh, factors. Uh, for, this, for the x rays we keep the two, two meters as the reference uh, distance. The use, useful field size uh, for cesium is uh, 75 centimeter and it is 26 centimeter for, for x-rays. The uh, useful field size is large enough to cover all the chamber during the recalibration. This is an example of a field size for, for uh, x-rays. Uh, it's around 28 to 26. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, this is actually the uh, comparison uh, report that we sent to all the participants. We are, we ask them to to fill in this. Uh, I mean, to report the the uh, measurement or the calibration results using this template. It is in Excel, and it includes all the uh, information that will allow us to double check the calculation in case we have any problem. As explained in the pro in the uh, comparison protocol, if we if we found if we find any any problem in the calculation, we ask the the lab to review the calculation, and uh, sometimes we can also ask them to repeat the calibration. But we actually, uh, as, in, as uh, described in the protocol, we ask them to calibrate twice and report the results, the average results of the two calibration. We ask also, we ask them to report or to send us uh, their uncertainty budget, which is needed for the uh, for the uh, evaluation of the uncertainty. Uh, let me give you some examples of the QAQC. I will not present all the, the results here, but just give you an example of, of check source measurements. So the chamber is undergoing uh, check source measurement. We position the, uh, the uh, cesium, uh, sorry, the uh, strontium-90 uh, source over the chamber. We keep it for 24 uh, hours just to start to get stabilized and then we perform the measurement for a very long, long time using a data acquisition system that can collect the charge, the temperature, pressure, and then we we have here to uh, the results for the reference chamber in two dates and we uh, whenever the chamber is back to us, we repeat the same measurement and we this is uh, the first uh, in a quality indicator of the good status of the chamber. Yeah, so this is the reference chamber and this is the, the uh, transfer, uh, transfer chamber. Uh, yeah, now for the, uh, for the uh, supplementary uh, comparison for diagnostic radiology, also we have uh, quite the same uh, participants as the only participant who left this comparison is uh, Jordan. So they asked us to, uh, uh, they said that they are not able to uh, participate because they didn't establish yet the uh, diagnostic radiology beam qualities. So uh, we keep this, if, if they have the chance to establish the diagnostic before or by the end of this uh, exercise, we can just uh, allow them to, uh, to join again to this, uh, 
exercise. So this is the artifact that we selected. It, it's the uh, standard imaging A3 uh, spherical chamber, very nice uh, chamber. Uh, initially, we were planning to send two chambers, the A3 for RQR and RQT and A4 for RQA. Uh, but we uh, got, uh, I mean, uh, advice from the PTB uh, friends. They said that they can, we can use the, uh, this chamber for both all qualities. So we keep, we kept this chamber just for, for, uh, for all the beam qualities. Uh, this is the, uh, the uh, protocol. Uh, and this is the actually uh, the actual schedule. This is the initial schedule. Actually, we were supposed to start in May uh, with the uh, uh, quality uh, QAQC measurement in uh, uh, in our lab and the calibration in our lab. We actually we it took uh, it took about uh, three weeks extensive measurement, extensive calibration. We repeated. Actually, we calibrated this chamber for all the beam uh, qualities RQR, RQE and RQT and then uh, we repeated the uh, the, the uh, calibration three times uh, using three different uh, staff members I mean three different just to uh, to double check the uh, the result we 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 got very nice uh, consistency between the, uh, the measurement and then we sent the chamber to our colleague colleagues here in Riyadh it's, it's not that far so they did the measurement also in in, in July. Uh, we were supposed to send the chamber to, uh, sorry, not to Jordan. Yeah, I think this is the old version. This is actually to um, to Kuwait. So it was supposed to go to uh, Kuwait in June. We had, uh, uh, because of the uh, the holidays here, we had to post we had to postpone the chamber. And we, ha we still had the problem with the Samsa uh, who came up with another procedure uh, asking us to uh, give uh, an authorization to the uh, from the hospital to Sansa to export the chamber so we had and because of the holiday which uh, which lasts last I mean uh, last 10 days so uh, the chamber was actually sent yes yesterday so now it's on the way to the uh, to the Kuwait so if we uh, because of this this uh, shift and uh, because of the uh, problem that we are still having with the with the SSDL of Turkey right now, we, we don't have any uh, uh, idea about the behavior of the chamber. Was it exported or not? Uh, so it, it it took uh, over three months just to uh, to get uh, cleared from the customs. So we prefer to postpone the the Turkey to the uh, to the end just to avoid. Uh, delay additional delay for diagnostic radiology. We don't want to to uh, to run this uh, this um, this uh, comparisons for forever. We would like to finalize the comparisons, uh, finalize the report, and get our colleagues getting their uh, comparison certificates and publish their CMCs. So hopefully, uh, if everything is is uh, is good, we by the beginning of 2024. We will have, inshallah, our, our diagnostic radiology and radiation protection over. These are the beam qualities that we select, select RQR2, RQR5, and RQR10. Uh, many people are asking me why we selected the RQR4. This, is, uh, this quality is known for many, many X-ray tubes are not really stable, but we wanted to keep it just to watch, to see if there is actually uh, any any uh, problem dealing with the this low energy uh, low lamp beam quality? Uh, so we did our measurement. We don't have any problem in our 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 uh, uh, our lab. Yes. So this is the geometry. So we uh, uh, we use the uh, the uh, focus to chamber distance as one meter and the useful field size here is 10 centimeter so we have different collimators so we selected the collimator that gives this is just an example of uh, beam profile obtained with the, using a gaff chromic so if you go to 95 percent which is the useful uh, we consider 95 percent as the useful field size sometimes we even we consider 97 percent as the as a flattened uh, 
it size, but it is about 10 centimeter, which is, uh, uh, I mean, flat enough and uh, to cover, to irradiate the chamber, a small chamber. Uh, yes, uh, when it comes to the measurement with RQA, we get, we get a lower uh, signal, which is about pico coulomb. 10 to the minus 12, minus 11. But we have very nice reproducibility of the measurements. And this is the, also the, uh, the, uh, the uh, comparison report uh, that we, uh, we send, send to, the, to the participants. It is in, in Excel, so they need just to fill in the, uh, the, uh, the results here. And do in, for both a narrow beam and uh, diagnostic, we request them to do the to, to uh, provide us with the measurement of the reference and the transfer chamber along with the uh, monitor chamber just to to check the stability of the uh, the x-ray tube and check the uh, the two procedures the calibration with or without the uh, the monitor and this is also the uncertainty budget this is very important some participants in the first exercise for the dish protection they reported the high uh, uncertainty this is uh, good and and bad uh, this is good for uh, for them because when uh, if, if you have a large uh, error bar that you are you uh, for sure you get uh, uh, your uh, your uh, you pass the exam somehow but we request them to review the uncertainty we we, uh, we notice that there are some some inconsistencies in the in the uh, uncertainty uh, components. So we advise the participants to review the uncertainty. Okay. And uh, with that, thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, that, then uh, I would be more than happy to respond. Finally, we are joined today by Shaiman Zamanesi. Uh, Shaiman holds a master's degree in physics from the University of uh, Maria Puri Eskolodowska uh, in Poland. Uh, he has over 10 years work experience in the National Center for Nuclear Research in Poland and the domain of mixed radiation field symmetry. Uh, among the routine research activities, uh, he was involved in the development of BNCT research team for the Polish Maria Research uh, Reactor. Uh, currently, he joined SSDL team of the Federal Authority for nuclear regulation at United Arab Emirates as an expert with the mission of establishing the reference in neutron fields. Additionally, he is a member of GulfMet TCIR. So welcome, Simon. I'm looking forward to hear your presentation. Please start, share your screen. My presentation uh, was <clears throat> is based mostly on this, what uh, it's, uh, would be referred to those what uh, was uh, refer uh, what was presented uh, before uh, by uh, Samia uh, on uh, this uh, roadmap uh, on from her uh, presentation, and uh, I think there was uh, clearly identified the the way how the the, the technical committee. Uh, should uh, develop like uh, establish new uh, new fields uh, for measurements and uh, um, uh, organize more uh, um, inter comparison samia also presented uh, this um, this uh, table which i uh, which i reorganize uh, a little bit uh, just to show you uh, um, just to show you some uh, some uh, some fact which I which I uh, noticed. Uh, um, first of all, uh, as you see, as as you remember from uh, from that presentation, uh, the Gulf Met. Uh, ionizing radiation uh, committee. Uh, is uh, based mostly on the secondary standard laboratories, uh, which are uh, which are uh, which are based on 
the uh, existing SSDL, SSDL network uh, from from IAEA. So uh, there is uh, and uh, SSDL existence uh, is uh, the main goal of SSDL laboratories is uh, to provide the services for for end users. So they uh, they have to uh, provide uh, calibration services for in the fields of radiation protection and uh, the fields of uh, diagnostic radiology or finally uh, in in uh, radiotherapy uh, field uh, so uh, there are some uh, gaps which uh, which you may notice even uh, from from this uh, small sample of uh, of uh, gulf mat uh, so uh, as you see, there is a radiation uh, protection field that is generally covered by, by most of the laboratories, but there is no uh, contamination. Uh, so basically, uh, there is no any uh, development uh, in, in this area. Only one laboratory is, has, has some experience with this field, but uh, they are, um, as I understand, uh, from the last uh, training, which was delivered uh, this year, uh, the government uh, would expand into this uh, this area. So uh, in uh, in future, there would be some kind of intercomparison uh, organized uh, in this uh, in this area. Of course, as soon as uh, the uh, the calibration uh, the calibration services uh, would be uh, provided, there is also uh, not that much uh, developed in the field of. Um, uh, in the field of uh, radiotherapy, uh, so uh, as you see, only uh, only uh, SSDL flow from the um, from the hospital uh, is uh, covered fully the so uh, this uh, these areas, and basically there is no any laboratories uh, who uh, who dealing with uh, radioactivity. Um, calibrations and uh, yes, that's uh, the, from my point of view. This is the 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 main uh, task, and that's the, that's the the uh, top uh, challenge uh, for for this uh, community. As uh, from future plans. Uh, which are uh, which are uh, uh, identified by uh, by colleagues from Saudi Arabia. It's uh, very very uh, very strictly uh, given. It is as uh, just development uh, of uh, therapy uh, detectors. Uh, so uh, just uh, development of uh, um, calibration services in the uh, in the terms of uh, in the quantities of uh, radiotherapy uh, um, qualities uh, calibration uh, of uh, cylindrical uh, chambers uh, for for um, in terms of absorb those to water and uh, this is for a linear accelerator uh, there will be also uh, on-site calibration of those monitors that this service would be um, uh, delivered soon and also calibration of small volume utilization chambers for uh, Cobalt uh, 6C unit with small collimators, um, and uh, what uh, what refers to my uh, previous slide, when uh, this consideration from previous slides, there will be calibration of those calibrators used in nuclear medicine, which is, I think, this good start to develop uh, radioactivity. 
um, some experience in, in this field uh, of measuring radioactivity. Uh, the other SSDL from Saudi Arabia uh, is uh, currently working on the neutron to, uh, on establishing of neutron uh, fields uh, so they uh, so they doing um, assessment of uh, currently installed uh, neutron irradiator uh, so um, from this uh, current challenges uh, they identify uh, the simulations of uh, the um, mcnp or uh, um, or other uh, codes uh, simulations uh, with uh, uh, which allows them to identify the parameters of the uh, of this beam. Uh, from uh, our side in the UAE, uh, we are uh, currently uh, planning uh, to start. Um, with services of um, calibration of uh, not surface sources, uh, but uh, calibration of uh, contamination meters by using of, of uh, surface uh, sources. Uh, and our current uh, current uh, task is. Um, calibration of uh, established services for calibration of uh, neutron measuring uh, devices, which uh, we start some uh, initial measurements and we have uh, already some some results into this. As uh, Samia said, and it's visible on here on <laughs> On the uh, on the picture uh, below, we have a panoramic irradiator uh, with a measurement beryllium source, uh, and uh, we have to, uh, in order to establish all uh, parameters of the field, we have to uh, characterize the first of the, the neutron source, so establish the source emission, uh, source emission anisotropy, neutron do some neutron spectrometry. Uh, for the source, and uh, then um, by using transfer device, calibrated uh, transfer device, we have to uh, measure uh, the um, scattering, uh, scattered radiation, uh, amount of scattered radiation, and this result of this uh, this measurement is uh, visible on the uh, on the graph above. As you see, uh, the forty percent is uh, mostly reached uh, somewhere, uh, somewhere near two meter, two two and a half uh, meters. So uh, this would be the useful uh, length uh, for our calibration uh, bench. The next task. Which we, uh, which we're dealing with, is uh, um, provide numerical modeling uh, of 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 this whole uh, of uh, whole param parameters which we measure and measured already, and compare uh, this uh, results uh, this result from uh, numerical mo modeling to uh, to this uh, experimentally. Uh, games uh, results and uh, well yes that's uh, that's something what we are currently struggling with uh, that's uh, what uh, we see as as challenges and uh, why we're we doing this <laughs> because uh, because uh, knowing the uh, the exact uh, parameters of our fields allow us uh, in in the future, in the, in, in the next uh, few years, organize an uh, intercomparison for the for this region. Uh, so we have to know exactly uh, what we have and uh, 
and uh, to serve as reference laboratory for this uh, for this uh, purpose we need to uh, we need to know exactly uh, what we have and where are uh, our weak uh, fields so uh, as a summary uh, what uh, what we get uh, it's um, uh, from our uh, from government community uh, we need to identify uh, active members from the region uh, so uh, this uh, so this uh, situation uh, like for now uh, government has uh, only six members and uh, they are struggling with uh, uh, with uh, become designated institutes uh, so uh, as I understand sometimes there is a, a strange situation that's uh, like the, there needs to be prepared uh, uh, official paper but some countries do not know and which uh, whom supposed to give this uh, uh, give this paper and uh, so this is really uh, really uh, simple uh, from one side, uh, simple, uh, but uh, very time-consuming uh, processes. Um, as I said at the beginning, the 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 whole uh, Unisic radiation uh, technical uh, committee in government is based on secondary standard laboratories. Uh, there is no. Uh, primary labs, no primary um, artifacts, which uh, realize the basic quantities from, from uh, on, on the base of uh, primary uh, standards. So uh, uh, this uh, would be further step for development. And uh, final, finally, uh, it's uh, just to cover all the gaps of so all SSDL should cover the these existing uh, gaps, which uh, which they uh, can have to to finalize to provide the whole spectra of services. So, in order, we have development of neutron fields, uh, calibration of surface contamination monitor quantities, and services for radiotherapy and mm, those audits and the comparison. Uh, programs mm. and that's that's what I can say today thank you